Hello, and welcome to episode 2 of Project Bluebird. In this episode, I plan to assemble all the main parts for the Bluebird, so that I can then get started on my favourite stage, adding the detail. In the last episode, you have seen how I designed and 3D printed the main parts in ABS. These have now had any support material removed, and have been basically cleaned up, so that I can start working on joining the parts together. I've checked them for dimensional accuracy, and filed down any parts where necessary. I was pleased that the parts came out so close to the correct size, and there was really very little tweaking to be done. Some people print in PLA, which is easier to print, but I find it harder to finish. It can also have stability issues, that's why I always print with ABS. I allow for 1% shrinkage all over when I print with ABS, which gives me a perfect result. Other sources of ABS may vary, but I've found a brand that doesn't warp and gives me consistent, predictable results. I use a brand called ABS-X. There's a link to my filament suppliers in the description. With the parts trued up, it's time to join them together. I designed the 3D prints to take 3mm brass dowels. Once the ABS was drilled out with a tight fit in one part and an oversized hole in the other, the parts can be fitted together for the first time. Now it's finally starting to look like Bluebird, but there's still a long way to go. And these are the parts that make up the wheels and tyres. Each tyre is in two halves, and each wheel has an inner and outer face. That's four parts for each of the six wheels of Bluebird. The tyres were printed on my FDM printer, in ABS, and the wheels were printed on my resin printer, needing hardly any cleaning up. And this is how they'll be fitted to Bluebird. I'm using a length of M3 studding through the bodywork, stacking up the tyres in order and then securing them with a nut, which will then be covered by the outer wheel. All this happened in December, and before the Christmas break. While I was enjoying some R&R, &R, researching various projects, and trying to find some more information on Bluebird, I found this image. It's of Bluebird when it was in the UK, at the time I saw it at Goodwood, and it shows one thing very clearly. The cockpit is not in the centre. It's right-hand drive. This was a bit of a setback. At this point, I wasn't sure whether it was worth continuing the project. But after a pint of Guinness and some quiet time, I felt maybe I had a solution. I knew that in Bluebird's various incarnations, efforts had been made to negotiate the prop shaft running to the rear wheels. Initially, it ran beneath the seat, but after redesigning the car, it was moved to the left-hand side, with Campbell sitting on the right. I knew this was the case with the earlier cars, but thought that with the 1935 Bluebird being extensively reworked, the driver's position was centralised, and the prop shaft moved further over. This is what happens when there are no plans, and only limited photographs. Looking back on my Goodwood photographs, it's obvious. You can even see the different profiles of the left and right windscreen frames, to match the contours. Well, it was a good thing I hadn't glued all the parts together. I think measure twice, cut once springs to mind. OK, let's sort this problem out. I reckon that if I reprint the tail section with the correct offset, I should be able to adapt the front of the cockpit to suit. How hard can that be? Here's the original centred tail, and here's the new offset part, fresh from the printer, yet to be cleaned up. After a bit of cutting and filing, it's off with the old and on with the new. Now there's just a slight alignment issue to resolve, and file the old tail. Unfortunately, I don't have the facilities to recycle and reuse my waste prints, but it can be done. After a couple of days of gluing, cutting, filling, filing and sanding, the cockpit is at last where it should be. I've also joined the other parts together, filled and sanded the joins, and cut a hole in the cockpit floor for better access. The wheels and tyres are now also cleaned up, glued, filled and sanded back. They're actually ready for paint, but that'll have to wait for another day. The 
The front wheels go on well, but I do need to add some suspension and brake details. The rears are also looking good. I've drilled out small holes in all the tyre units so that I can push out the tight-fitting wheel discs. The wheels and tyres will be painted separately and then glued together at the end. So, with everything together, let's see how Bluebird looks so far. Pretty good, I reckon, but not quite right. I think I need to look back at my photos. The front and rear corners need to be more rounded and the spine needs to be narrower. These subtle differences would have been easily corrected in the design stage with a decent set of drawings. Sadly, that wasn't an option. I'll just have to go old school and break out the files on the Dremel. Fortunately, when I designed the CAD files, I gave everything a 3mm wall thickness, which means there's plenty of material there before I file straight through and put a hole in the bodywork. The great thing about ABS is that it files and sands well, which makes this process fairly straightforward. After a bit of milliput and some light sanding, we've made it. At last I've got a model that's basically the right shape. It may not be perfect, but I think it's pretty close. There are certainly no glaring errors now. In the next episode, I'll detail up the cockpit, suspension and exhausts. I hope you're enjoying Project Bluebird. If you are, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel. So you catch my next video when it goes live, click on the bell icon. As you can see from my channel, I always have lots of projects going on, which I hope you'll find interesting. These range from my Staples and Vine models, featured in Sarah's vlog, to short projects like this and the T80. If you have any questions about Project Bluebird, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.